Good afternoon. It's Monday. <laughs> Anyone here? Sunday, Monday. No makeup. No bra. No kidding. Let's go. <laughs> Who's in the house with me today? Who is here? I see people. Not one word. Hi, Carol Ann. Good to see you. Happy Monday to you. Who else is here? Maybe I don't have my usual folks. There's my girl Margarita. Jan, hello. Doris is here. Hello. Happy Sunday, Monday to you, Rebecca. Hi, Lita. Everybody's getting ready. These are my girls getting ready for the, the not the sprint, um, the Blitz. Hi, Denise. Heidi. Alicia. Good to see you all. Carla's here, and so's Jennifer. The lovelies, they're marching on in. Hello, Kathy and Joyce. Hello, Susan and Joanne. There's Delinda and Paula. She's a lurker, she's laughing. <laughs> Hi, Diane. Blitz prep, yes ma'am, I'm all ready. It's all gonna be good, you know? I'm ready too, we're ready, we're ready for this. I'm gonna just make a couple of, say a couple of words. I did in our group as well, but for those of you who are getting ready for it, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit, just a tiny because it starts tomorrow. It's just a 10 day thing and it's super easy. That's one of the things that I like about it. Hi, Jana. Good to see you. I just got a notification that you'd mentioned me in a comment. Isn't that so funny? It just flashed on here and then, then you just said hi, Leanne. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, today is Sunday, Monday. That's it. Good morning, Sandra. You know, I'm uh, thinking about everything and I just kind of want to talk a little bit about how we speak to ourselves, you know? Hi, Lynn. I want to, you know, we, we can be super harsh, can't we? Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever just said words and then just wanted to take it back? Like, oh man, that came out of my mouth? Well, you know, I can relate. <laughs> I can certainly relate. But the way we speak about ourselves and what we say about ourselves or not say can be the most harsh words ever. And I want to talk about that just a little bit um, this morning and make sure that everybody is set up and ready to rock and roll for our blitz. Whatever you're doing, if you're part of the um, Hot Melt Sprint group, you know, we always post things in there. And I will let you know that we also have this group called The Daily Dish. It's right here on Facebook. And it's for people who get our daily email newsletter. We, we have a daily email newsletter that goes out, believe it or not, on saving dinner. And um, it's it has everything in it, you know, because saving dinner started out um, as just this humble little nutritionist, that would be me, trying to help families get back to the dinner table and eat one healthy meal at a time. Because I was kind of appalled but way back in the olden days that people didn't you know, come to the dinner table. And for me growing up, that was the only representation of stability that I had because we had a kind of a, we put the fun in dysfunction. Let's just say that uh, my, my household was quite dysfunctional growing up. And so I thought, you know, if I feel like that at this age with my children, I am going to imagine there are other people too longing to get their families back to the dinner table. Things evolved and changed and you know, as a nutritionist, I had to address the elephant in the room, which was me, <laughs> and really get my 237 pound body uh, back into a reasonable range. And, and so I have, and I've brought that along. That's the big synopsis right there. And today I'm gonna talk a little bit about along the way on the journey, as we're going through this, we speak to ourselves. You know, we have this conversation going on between our ears and, and it can be quite crushing. So a little, we're gonna just kind of dab on that a little bit. I've got some things I think might you might find helpful. 
Um, meanwhile, we have our left to fix and crave crushers. This is the appetite control kit. I love this stuff that if you buy three of these, of this pair, <laughs> you're already going to get a 10% discount on buying them together, but you're also going to get free shipping and a fourth set free. Put three in your cart and put ships free into the, um, right there in the little promo window and you're gonna get a screaming deal. And not only that, you're also gonna get a mindful mug. Who doesn't love this mug, right? It says mindful mug because it keeps us mindful. We know that we need to drink our bone broth and stay mindful about the food we're gonna eat. And it's also a pinkies up cup. They are so cute. Because you guys pinkies, you know, you pinkies up more than I do. You, you're like throwing it down, pinkies up, this is it. <laughs> which I just love, I think it's wonderful. All right, so don't forget, we also have every Friday, we also have our question and answer. You know, it's free, by the way. And uh, you can get your questions answered directly by me. I'm happy to do that. All you have to do is send them into support at savingdinner.com and in that subject line, don't forget, question for Leanne on Friday so we know what it's about. And I love answering your questions. We get the most, don't we get the most interesting questions? We get questions about nutrition, cooking, you know, name that tune. So yeah, happy to help you out with that. And uh, so don't forget also that next Saturday, next Saturday I will not be on because Marla and I are at it again. You know, we've had a lot of emails, both of us have, and a lot of uh, messages um, about, you know, I've got to start this school year. I'm going to home, be homeschooling or distant learning and I, you know, got, I want to course correct what happened last time and really get ready for the school year. Well, I homeschooled my kids for eight years, so I understand what it is to prepare a curriculum, to deliver the curriculum and have to course correct sometimes in the middle of everything because, you know, it's not ever perfect, by the way, never, <laughs> never perfect. Um, so we've decided we're going to put together a workshop not a conference, a workshop, an all day thing next Saturday, so that you can actually get into the weeds with us, learn how to put this stuff together so you have some kind of tangible uh, document with you, if you will, and you'll know what to do. <laughs> That's half the battle of implementing, isn't it? Knowing exactly what to do. And we're gonna take you all the way through soup to nuts, you know? how to have dinner on the table every night, how to menu plan, nutrition stuff. We're also gonna have the, the, the framework, like this is how you put this whole thing together. It, it, th there's a lot of moving parts and you wanna get it right, you know? Go home. There's a lot of responsibility there when you're you know, schooling your kids, let me just tell you. We have a new, oh, so where do you find this <laughs> to sign up? And there's $140 worth of swag bag stuff, lots of stuff. Um, go to savingdinner.com forward slash mama, M-A-M-A, -M -A, mama. And you'll see it there and you can read all about it and see all the stuff in the swag bag. Here's your quote of the week. If you don't like how things are, change it. You're not a tree. How many times have you heard me say that? I didn't know it came from Jim Rohn, but I'll, I've, I'm happy to give him credit. He's brilliant, was a brilliant man, and absolutely, um, absolutely had a big impact on me when I was first starting to dive into all this personal development stuff because I wanted more than I had in my life. And by the way, I hope you want more than what you have right now. You know why? Having more, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean you're guilt, you know, you're greedy. It doesn't mean you're an awful person. We don't need to be sacrificial lambs for everyone, right? We need to want more in our life. We want, we need to want everything. We need to look at our lives and say, how can I make it better? Um, that, that's one of the reasons why I like, I like this quote from Jim Rohn. You know, we're not trees. When people tell me that they're They've got these horrible doctors and he won't work with me and he won't do this. And I'm like, fire him, fire her. I fired, I, I can't even tell you how many doctors I've fired. You know why? Because you're not a tree. You don't have to stay with that doctor. You can find someone else. Yes, it's, it's difficult, but you can always get what it is that you want. If you're intent on it, 
And if you're willing to say, get away from me, no to you, no to you, no to you. I'm done with all of that. We can do this, guys. It's just a matter of making that decision. We are not trees. We don't have to stay where we are. We can move around. These things work, you know? <laughs> I love that. All right, so where am I here with all of my stuff? Um, you know, I was talking just a minute ago about, you know, a couple of things I've been thinking about. People have been saying, oh, I've fallen off the wagon. I want to talk about that. I will be talking about that next week because wagons are funny things. <laughs> That's one. The other thing I want to talk to you about today is, is just about this whole idea of speaking the truth in love. You know, the Bible is very clear, and I was reading in Ephesians today, talking about how we need to speak the truth in love. That just means that we have to be kind. That just means that we are not to be these people who are telling the truth in such a, you know, harsh way that we're repelling people, you know? It's not going to win you any friends or influence any people, is it? As a matter of fact, you've heard the saying before that um, you're going you're gonna to attract more bees with honey than vinegar, right? Well, it's true. And how we speak, and when we speak in love, what we're saying is that you care. When you're speaking in love, you're saying that I am aware of you. I want to make sure that you are handled correctly and that I'm gentle with you and that I love you. As a parent, you know, I, I can tell you I spend a lot of time um, apologizing to my children. Not a lot of time, but times apologizing to my children. Because there are times when children can be absolutely exasperating, you know? Why, mom? Why? Why, 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 why? And constant, you know, yammer, yammer, yammer. They have no filters. You know, that's our job. We have to teach them how to have filters. We have to teach them appropriate what's appropriate to say and what isn't. We have to teach them how to chew with their mouth closed and how to say please and thank you. We have to teach them how to clean a toilet and brush their teeth and, and do all kinds of things. We're their teachers, we're their trainers. And, but it can be exasperating, you know? They don't learn by osmosis, by the way, but we can really get kind of caught up in this whole thing of just like, oh, can you just put a lid on it? And so, I and I have been there too. I mean, it's just a lot. You've got two kids under, you know, two and under, and you know, my kids are 21 months apart. We doubled down on everything. I had, there were baby stages for days, just going, 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 and I felt like a constant nursing machine. You, you know the drill, I'm sure you've been there. But the thing is, that what I recognized and what I realized was just how fresh and how penetratable their little souls and their little psyches were and one harsh word for me was is like dropping a, a ton of bricks on their heads you know it just it just was unconscionable and here I was this great big person and here is this little tiny soul that the, my words have an impact and will take them for the rest of their lives when I realized the the enormity of that I started to recognize that when I made a mistake, instead of acting like this was just, you know, bright and, and just pretending it didn't happen or whatever, you know, was a, a you know, knee-jerk reaction, I had to instead get into the weeds and just calm down on their level and look them straight in the eye and say, you know what, honey? I was too harsh. I was, I was wrong. I should not have spoken to you like that. Will you forgive me? And I've done that more than one time. And my daughter told me, I think it was my daughter, it was maybe it was my son, that that meant something to them. And they remembered it. Sorry, there's a little nap. <laughs> and they remembered that later on in life. And I am convinced that this is what is a building block for us with our children. But I'm also going to flip this on its side and say this is what we do to ourselves. We speak to ourselves in such harsh terms, such harsh terms, and just such terms when we don't understand that oftentimes when we're speaking about ourselves like that, we're speaking to that wounded four-year-old, you know, and it's us. And yet we could persist on speaking like this to ourselves and putting ourselves down in such a horrible way. 
And I'm bringing this up because as we go forward with whatever it is that we're focusing on, because again, we want to focus on the positive things because what we focus on expands. And as we're focusing on this, as we're getting ready for a new challenge, like we're going into the blitz, you know, sometimes we're so results oriented that when we don't see the results that we want immediately, we start the whole put down thing. And we start saying, oh, I'm just, you know, I must be doing something wrong and it's, I, I can't lose weight and I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing this right. I am not good at this. I can't lose weight. I'm a mess. My body holds on to everything. We start saying this diatribe of stuff that's just not true, or at least not entirely true. Maybe you do have some kind of a hormonal thing that's making you cause hold on to weight a little bit more than the next guy. I, I know what that's about. I've been through, you know, all the pauses, peri, perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. I've been through all of it. I've had um, um, PMS. I've had all of the things. I've had pregnancies. I've had miscarriages. I've had it all. And, and the thing that we have to look at is that we just, we have things going on. Yes, we do. And we have to acknowledge, appreciate, and honor our physiology. But we also not need to not be putting ourselves down every step of the way. Speak the truth, but speak the truth in love. Love yourself, for heaven's sakes. If, <laughs> Yesterday, I, I told you, and I've said, shared this a few times before, that an unloved body isn't going to produce any results. You know? Go, go yell at a plant and watch what happens to a plant that's yelled at versus a plant that's not. You know, you watch these, I have to change this channel, by the way, but you're watching um, this, these TV show or these commercials on TV shows and all of a sudden Sarah McLaughlin starts to sing in that haunting voice and they start showing shivering animals out in the snow and chained up and all of this and I just, I can't. Nope, not gonna watch it, gotta change the channel. But we're kinda like that shivering animal in the snow, just neglected. We're taking care of everything else, everyone else, doing all the things and then we're yelling at ourselves and we're putting ourselves down, we're throwing ourselves out in the cold, and we haven't yet loved ourselves. Loving ourselves up into this and just looking and saying, you know what, you're doing a good job. You know what, you're following this plan. You know what, we'll figure this out. We're in this together. You don't have the option of taking your body into the next shop and saying, you know, I'm just ready to tr trade this old girl in. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. Yet we treat ourselves in, in ways that are just, they're just un, unconscionable. Unconscionable. We speak so harshly. We speak in voices and we just put ourselves down in a continual diatribe. And I wanna to say to you that I understand the frustration of getting stuck, being on a plateau, or feeling like, gee, I just can't do this. This is too hard or this is too whatever. And even giving up. But I wanna bring you back to this place of understanding that you can love yourself to the next place. That you are capable, that you are able to love yourself even in the places of what you might think is failure. Failure is an experience. Failure is an object lesson if we choose to make it so. Failure doesn't have to say, okay, so this is your path now because you're not worth the time, you're not worth the energy, and you're not worth the sweet words that you would give a puppy. We, we oftentimes feed our pets better than we feed ourselves. We oftentimes love up our, our kittens and, and rescue animals more than we take care of our, and love ourselves. Think about that. What if we had the tenacity to say, you know what? I am gonna speak the truth in love and I am gonna speak the truth about myself and just say, you know what? Yeah, I've got an extra 40 pounds on me, but you know what? I am doing everything in my power to take care of this. And there's gonna be some ups, 
there's gonna be some downs, but I'm in it to win it. I'm gonna stay the course because I'm worth it. And then I'm gonna get curious and I'm gonna see what's going on here. Why is this not working? And I'm gonna get into the weeds. I'm gonna use my tools and I'm gonna figure this out because I'm worth the time and the effort and I love myself enough to do it. There's a whole different perspective when we start to understand that we're worth the time. Madonna once said that people are afraid to say what they want, um, what they really want, and that's one of the reasons why they don't ever get what they really want. So what do you really want? What do you really want? I'm dead serious. I'm asking you this question. I want you to write it down. What do I really want? Do you want to lose 50 pounds, 40 pounds, 30 pounds, whatever, 100 pounds, 200 pounds? Do you want that? Write it down. Do you want a more vibrant life? Do you want to not have pain? Do you want to feel good in your skin? Do you want to look forward to every day? Do you want the complaining to go away? Do you want your, your words to be uplifting to the people around you? Write down what it is that you want. Don't be afraid to look. Don't be afraid to call it out for what it is, but don't put yourself down in the harshest terms and expect that that harshness is going to help you out. Speak the truth in love, including yourself. Beth says she wants to lose and maintain. That is a fantastic goal. Now, how do we get into these goals? How do we make these goals? Simple. We first of all take a look and we, we figure out what the truth is. We figure out what it is that we need to, to lose or, or wherever it is that we are. Um, sometimes we do it with a doctor. Sometimes we do it with charts and measurements and all of that kind of stuff. But if you have made a decision for yourself that this is what you want, then you got to reverse engineer it. Okay, let's start. <laughs> let's start with what you want. If you want to lose 50 pounds, for example, then you, you're going to look and look at it from as two pounds, three pounds, maybe a week. Then do the math. How many weeks is that going to take you? What are you willing to to spend in order to get back the reward? Are you willing to see it through? Are you willing? Are you willing to say this is hard? I am on a plateau. What do I need to do to next? This is exactly what we keep looking at, you know, and we keep going back to it because. It's a dance. It's a long journey and it takes time. You know, my coaching clients, when they sign up, they sign up for a year. And I tell them, you're not gonna get this next week. You're not gonna get this even next month. What you are gonna get, however, is another notch on your stick, another step in the journey. And if you're wise, if you're a wise woman, you're gonna embrace the journey on the way. It's going to be teaching you all kinds of stuff that maybe you never, ever, ever thought of. And I'm going to tell you what, every single one of my coaching clients from, and I've been a nutritionist, by the way, since 1993, okay? So keep this in mind. That's a lot of people. Every single one of my coaching clients that has made it to their goal said, it was, it, it's nice to be in the size six jeans, but what I learned along the way, irreplaceable. And that's why I say embrace, lean in, hold on to the journey because the journey is going to be the most incredible part of this whole thing. The goal is great, but do not rush. Stop and smell the roses and figure this stuff out because at the end, not only are you going to be in, you know, the jeans that you want to be in and wearing a bathing suit in public maybe for the first time or whatever it is, but you're going to be feeling good in your own skin. You're going to have a vibrant life. It's going to look completely different than it does right now. And you are gonna be a different woman. Thank God, right? We all wanna be different. I wanna be a different woman than I was last year and I wanna be a different woman next year because I wanna learn. I wanna take those experiences that I've learned, I wanna apply them, and a lot of them I don't wanna repeat. I wanna take the experience and leave the pain. We can do that if we are these wise women. We can do that if we take every step of the way and learn and put it in our experience file and dismiss the pain and just say, you know what, that was then and here we are now. This is so good. This is so good. The journey is everything. 
the journey is telling about who you are and the journey is giving you that vibrant rich life even though you haven't even met your goal yet you know do you see that do you see that we have when you start asking questions authentically about what's going on you will seek and find authentic answers and this is one of the places where we get a little bit analytical and kind of look at things like blueprints and we're, we're kind of engineering everything. We're not going into the emotional abyss of everything just being awful. You know, it's one of the reasons why I say all the time, unplug from the emotion. Because if we're all wrapped up in emotion and hand-wringing and, and catastrophizing and freaking out, we're no longer solution-oriented. No, we're not. We're just trying, we're escape oriented, trying to get away from the pain. But it doesn't have to be like that. At any point, we can make a decision. We can make a decision to say, you know what? It's not that I'm going to dismiss these emotions. I'm going to, there's something there, but what is going on right, near, right now requires a solution. And I'm going to get into the weeds and figure it out. It just makes all the difference in the world. It makes all the difference in the world. It says you can live with this emotion and you can also live with the solution as well. It's not one or the other. And remember, you know, what are our emotions are just this, this thing inside. It's a feeling that we have in our body and they don't have to direct the traffic on how we live our lives. We could just say, acknowledge it and say yes and <laughs> on to the next thing. We don't have to have our emotions getting up in the middle of Times Square and directing traffic for us. You know, that is where we get lost because emotions can take us very quickly down a very slippery slope and then we start all over again, don't we? It is the carousel of crazy. And emotionally, that's where we go because our emotions are what take us there because we haven't yet learned that we are in control of everything, not the emotions. If we can put them in their proper perspective, deal with them as we need to, then we can also put what we need to do in its proper perspective and have that determine the future. Not this emotional overwroughtness. I hate it when people say, well, women are just overly emotional and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, maybe at some point we earned some of that. I know I have. I have been... One of the, you, you want to really tick a woman off is just tell her to calm down. Have you had a man tell you that? Oh my gosh, I've had more than one man in my life tell me that and I would, you, you, that get out of the way. It's like a nuclear bomb went off inside of me and I'm just like, Brah! you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip your head off. It's just terrible. Because that's not gonna help, that, that doesn't help either, you know? Calm down, don't ever say that to anyone. You know, even your children, bring them alongside. Don't just tell them to do something like that. That is just so dismissive. We bring them alongside and do that with yourself. Don't just say, calm down. Just say, I'm gonna bring myself alongside. You can do that. Tell the truth in love to yourself. It doesn't mean you're in denial. It just means that you're gentle and kind to yourself. Harshness doesn't work. The only harsh thing that has ever worked ever I, I can't, well, I can't even think of anything. Can you? Can you think of any time that harsh worked with you? Any time? We don't need to be harsh. Love always covers a multitude of sins. And love always for yourself, for your family, for, for the people around you. We want to bring them in. And that's what attracts people in, is that kindness and that genuineness and that authentic appreciation it's all wrapped in together and that's the way I want to live my life daily daily looking for that opportunity so start saying some nice things about yourself would you I, I mean if you have a hundred pounds to lose and you just feel oh well it's just the and I'm, and I'm all this that and the other thing and Oh, and my face and this, I, you know, we just get into the thing. I hate that. But why don't instead say it's yeah and yeah. 
So I've got 100 pounds to lose, yeah? And I'm gonna do it. I've got 100 pounds to lose. I, I don't feel really good. Yeah, and I'm doing things to make myself feel better. Every day is a good decision for me. Every day I'm making a decision for myself because I know what I focus on is what I'm gonna get. And my reticular activating system is activated and it's running around my head 360 degrees. I am looking for evidence to support these beliefs. I have my GPS set to my goal and I'm on my way. Amen? I'm on my way. I am on my way and you are too because that's what we're looking for. So while we're looking for this and while we're on this journey, when it gets hard, when it gets tough, please speak to yourself in love. We're commanded to do so. The good word tells us that. This is how God speaks to us too. He sees us as daughters. We can jump on his lap and be loved up by him. So why don't you love yourself back up? Hmm? Be that woman. Make that determination that this is who you're going to be. A woman with a goal. A woman who's on her way. A woman, while it's not easy, while it gets hard and it gets rough, you're not going to fall down and do say all these harsh words about yourself. Instead, you're going to love yourself all the way back up. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And, you, and promise me this. Pinky's up, okay? Pinky's up for this. You're never going to quit on yourself. Never, ever, ever. Promise me. This is a promise. You're worth it. The journey's worth it. This is where all the juicy stuff is. This is where the vibrancy is, you guys, is the journey. God loves you. You've got a community that loves you. You've got all things in front of you. It's time for us to do this. It's time for us to step up and, and embrace our journeys, embrace what we're doing, and love ourselves back up. We all have little cups, don't we? We walk around with our, our little cups, half full or half empty, <laughs> right? Here we go, right? Well, I'll tell you what, mine is half full. Always, 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 always. And my heart is full. And my heart is full for you. And I really, really do love you all and appreciate you and thank you for being a part of my journey. It's exciting, isn't it? It's exciting. Yep, never give up. Ever, 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 ever. Work for Churchill, it's gonna work for us. I will see you tomorrow at 1, 1 p.m. Eastern as usual. Don't forget, this is they're gonna be in short supply soon here, and I'm not kidding. This is the Appetite Control Kit, and it works. These stuff work, this stuff is amazing. It's why it's in my shop, okay? Get the, you get when you order three you're gonna get a fourth set free this is the appetite control kit you'll also get a mindful mug with pinkies up on there <laughs> How fun and it ships free if you remember that and put it in your promo window I'm with you you know I'm with you guys pinkies up let's go have an incredible rest of the day I'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. peace